The purpose of this video is to demonstrate a Lab Tools scientific coprocessor running in an external field programmable gate array connected via the USB 2 bus. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will use an FTDI Morphic 2 field programmable gate array module with an onboard Altera FPGA chip. It is connected to the PC via a USB 2 cable for both programming and data transfer and thus does not need an expensive USB blaster for programming. The scientific routine that we are going to implement is a binning algorithm. There are a number of possible ways of writing such an algorithm and the one we are going to choose in software is probably the slowest but it maps easily into hardware. A binning algorithm at its simplest counts how often a number occurs in the input. More generally if we have say four bins spread over the range 0 to 10 and in our input vector we have a number like 4.35 then we will drop a 1 into the bin between 2.5 and 5. Similarly if a number like 3.8 comes along we will drop a further one into the same bin. The binning algorithm is implemented within the field programmable gate array as part of a modular firmware skeleton. The USB interface is handled by a dedicated FTDI chip and this talks to a block of code that generates bank, address and data 8-bit buses within the FPGA. There is also a block of code to generate a range of useful clock frequencies. Each instrument module can contain up to 256 USB registers and fast vector I.O. We've already discussed interfacing to a block of 16-bit 2 kilo word memory which as well as the 256 registers contains the fast vector I.O. We put a copy of this code in instrument 2 and then we add the binning algorithm. This is interfaces directly to the fast vector byte-wide data transfer and generates 16-bit data to write into the 2 kiloword memory. To demonstrate the spinning algorithm running in the field programmable gate array hardware, we will use an array processing language called APL, which just makes life easy, partly because it can write directly to the field programmable gate array over the USB. First we have to program the gate array, which is very quick. We need to clear a block of memory. We'll do it by simply writing zeros to it. We then need to turn on binning, write enable, we will write just three numbers, a 5, a 7 and a 9, and bin those three numbers. Here we go and bin them, and we turn off write enable, we turn off binning. Now we can read, say, the first 10 numbers back, and we see we have a 1 in each of the bins 5, 7 and 9. We can repeat that operation and we see we now have twos in each of those bins. We can display this number, these numbers graphically. Here we plot dots and we see we have a two in each of locations 5, 7 and 9. To demonstrate this algorithm with slightly larger vectors of numbers, we will take our few lines of code 
and write them as a simple function, which we can call with, uh, say, 5, 7, and 9 again. And then uh, if we run that again, we will see we now have 3 in each of those bins. Suppose we start again by clearing the memory. And suppose we bin a vector of numbers continuous between 100 and 200, and then bin an overlapping vector between 150 and 250. Not surprisingly, we will get a top hat type function. We will now move on to more complicated scientific examples. We now turn to binning floating point numbers. We call a routine Gauss that generates random numbers with a normal distribution. Here we're asking for a central value of 0 and a variance of 3, and we're asking for a thousand random numbers. This will give us noisy data, clustered more around 0 as we expect. We can bin this in our gate array hardware, sending it over the USB, binning it, and getting it back. And that takes about 25 milliseconds. We're timing it with a routine we're calling a Julian timestamp, which returns the Julian time in seconds. We run our binning routine, we call Julian timestamp again, and take the difference in time. That gave us a very noisy histogram of data. Uh, if we bin it with our faster software routine, we get the same noisy histogram. And if we bin it with the same algorithm as, as in the hardware in software, we find that both software cases are running quicker than the hardware because of the overheads of sending it over the USB and back again. Suppose we ask for 10,000 random numbers. We can bin that in our hardware, and we see we get less noise. We can ask for 100,000 random numbers. We bin that. The binning noise is lower. And we can ask for a million random numbers. And uh, that will take a moment to generate the vector of a million floating point numbers. We're there. And now we can... Um, we can bin that in our hardware, and that takes just on a second. Sending it over the USB bus, binning it, and getting it back. We can, um, we can bin that in our faster software routine, and that takes t nearly two and a half seconds. And we can bin it in the software routine using the same algorithm as the hardware and that takes just over four seconds. So we can see we have a substantial speed up by calling the uh, binning routine in the hardware over the USB bus compared with software on a, I, on a single i7 Intel processor running at 1.7 gigahertz. We will now demonstrate the spinning coprocessor running as part of a heavyweight scientific algorithm to calculating the scattering from arrays of nanopores. To, to be specific, cylindrical pores on an hexagonal lattice with about a 10 nanometer pore size. We will start two versions of the algorithm, the software version and the hardware version. We can see, in spite of being started second, the second, uh, the hardware version is already ahead on iterations. The intention is to move more of this neutron scattering calculation algorithm into gate arrays, possibly part of it in soft processes. Then less time will be taken in USB transfers.
the data is already visibly less noisy in the hardware pinning algorithm version, in spite of the fact it is only a small proportion of the calculation time. We have it completed 10 iterations in the software version and 14 in the hardware version, now 15. Lab Tools is preparing a set of GUI and other tools to assist with using these field programmable gate arrays both as coprocessors for data collection and for instrumentation control. The bare Morphic 2 FPGA modules are available both from FTDI and from Lab Tools, and Lab Tools can sell the modules ready mated to credit card size headers which interface to a series of uh, fast ADCs, data collection and instrumentation control modules that are under construction and development at Lab Tools. Cheers.